Titan's Submersible Implosion The allure of the deep sea, particularly the ghostly remains of the Titanic resting 12,500 feet below the surface, has captivated many. For OceanGate, an American tourism and expeditions company, this fascination translated into offering voyages to the wreck aboard their submersible Titan. This 22-foot-long vessel, constructed from carbon fiber and titanium, embarked on an expedition on June 18, 2023, carrying five individuals. The company's CEO, Stockton Rush, a seasoned French deep-sea explorer and Titanic expert Paul Henry Nargiolet, a British businessman, Hamish Harding, and a Pakistani-British businessman, Shahzada Dawood, along with his son, Sulman. Each mission specialist, as OceanGate termed its paying customers, had paid a substantial $250,000 for the eight-day excursion. Tragedy struck approximately one hour and 33 minutes into the Titan's descent. Communication with its mothership, the MV Polar Prince, was abruptly lost. When the submersible failed to resurface at its scheduled time, authorities were alerted, triggering a massive international search and rescue operation spearheaded by the United States Coast Guard, the U.S. Navy, and the Canadian Coast Guard. Aircraft and numerous commercial and research vessels equipped with remotely operated underwater vehicles joined the effort, scouring both the surface and the depths using sonar technology. The grim truth emerged four days later. A remotely operated vehicle discovered a debris field containing fragments of Titan, roughly 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic. Simultaneously, the U.S. Navy revealed that its sonar systems had detected an acoustic signature consistent with an implosion around the time communication ceased. The catastrophic failure of the submersible's composite pressure hull, succumbing to the immense pressure of the deep ocean, resulted in the instantaneous deaths of all five occupants. This devastating incident underscored the inherent risks associated with deep sea exploration and the critical importance of robust safety protocols, concerns that have been repeatedly voiced by industry experts prior to the tragedy. Kursk Submarine Disaster The Barents Sea, August 12, 2000, was the setting for a major Russian naval exercise. The first of its kind in over a decade. Among the participating vessels was the K-141 Kursk, a massive Oscar II-class nuclear submarine, nearly twice the length of a 747 jumbo jet. This submarine held a certain legendary status, rumored to be unsinkable and capable of withstanding a direct torpedo hit. On that fateful morning, the Kursk, carrying a full complement of combat weaponry, including 18 RPK-6 Vodopad anti-submarine missiles and 24 P-700 granite cruise missiles, was poised to conduct a training torpedo launch. At 11.29 a.m. local time, a seismic event measuring 1.5 on the Richter scale was recorded, its epicenter near the Kursk's location. A little over two minutes later, a far more powerful explosion, registering 4.2 on the Richter scale, approximately 250 times larger than the first, shook the region. This secondary event, equivalent to two to three tons of TNT, was detected as far away as Alaska. Despite the clear indications of a significant underwater incident, the Russian Navy appeared slow to grasp the gravity of the situation. It took over six hours for a search to be initiated, and the submarine's emergency rescue buoy, ironically, had been intentionally disabled during a previous mission. Locating the sunken vessel, resting at a depth of 354 feet, took an additional 10 hours. The ensuing rescue efforts were fraught with difficulties. Over four days, attempts to attach various diving bells and submersibles to the Kursk's escape hatch proved unsuccessful. The Russian Navy's response was widely criticized as sluggish and incompetent, marked by what appeared to be misinformation and a refusal of timely assistance from nearby international vessels. It wasn't until five days after the sinking that President Vladimir Putin authorized the acceptance of British and Norwegian aid. Two days later, divers from these nations finally assessed the flooded ninth compartment of the submarine only to find no survivors among the 118 personnel on board. The official inquiry later pointed to the faulty weld on a practice torpedo as the initial trigger, leading to a catastrophic chain of explosions within the Kursk. Ara San Juan Submarine Loss In late 2017, the Argentine submarine Ara San Juan set out on a training mission in the cold waters of the South Atlantic. It was a sturdy German-built vessel, in service since 1985. Among its 44 crew members was Argentina's first female submarine officer, a symbol of change aboard a steel relic of the past. No one on board knew it would be their final mission. On November 15th, contact was lost. The ocean, vast and indifferent, swallowed their signal hole. What followed was a desperate, multinational search unlike anything Argentina had ever mobilized. The last known position was 230 miles off the coast, and within hours, the region became a hive of naval and air activity. Search crews fought brutal weather, facing 26-foot waves. Satellite pings raised fleeting hopes, but they weren't from the San Juan. Flare sightings? False alarms. Even a thermal signal detected by a U.S. plane turned out to be nothing. 
and time was running out fast. The sub had only about seven days' worth of oxygen. Then came the most chilling revelation. An underwater explosion had been detected. A seismic event, picked up hours after their last contact, suggested a catastrophic failure deep below. Yet, 4,000 people from 13 nations refused to give up. Brazil, Canada, the UK, the US, and even Russia joined the hunt, bringing specialized ships, aircraft, and remote-operated subs. Argentina offered a $5 million reward for information. But it wasn't until a full year later, November 16, 2018, that a private US company, Ocean Infinity, located the wreckage nearly 3,000 feet down. The remains were shattered across 86,000 square feet of seabed. Their work earned them $7.5 million. But for the families, it brought something money couldn't buy. Answers. In the aftermath, Argentina's Navy leadership faced harsh scrutiny. A disaster like this leaves a mark not only in metal and lives lost, but in national memory. K-129 Soviet Submarine Sinking In March 1968, the Soviet submarine K-129 simply vanished during a Pacific patrol, taking 98 sailors and nuclear missiles with it. The Soviet Navy searched frantically, but came up empty. What they didn't know was that the US Navy had already located the wreck, lying 16,000 feet below the surface, thanks to its secret SOSIS listening system. And what happened next reads like something ripped from a Cold War thriller. The CIA launched a covert recovery mission under the name Project Azorian, but you couldn't just drag a submarine off the ocean floor without drawing attention. So the US built the Hughes Glomar Explorer, a massive ship posing as a mining vessel supposedly looking for manganese nodules. What it was really doing was trying to lift part of the Soviet submarine from the ocean floor without letting Moscow know. Incredibly, it worked, partly. The Glomar Explorer managed to grab hold of a large section of the sub in 1974, but as it was being hoisted, a mechanical failure caused the center section, reportedly containing the most valuable intelligence, to break off and sink again. What exactly the CIA got is still classified. Some sources say they recovered two nuclear torpedoes, but no coding machines. The Soviets suspected otherwise, and to this day, nobody's completely sure. In a more human twist, the US recovered the remains of six Soviet sailors. Due to radioactive contamination, they were buried at sea with full military honors. Years later, in 1992, a videotape of the ceremony was handed over to Russia as a gesture of respect. The whole story broke out in 1975 under the misleading name Project Jennifer. Decades later, the truth is still buried in secrecy, whispers, and theories of secret collisions and cover-ups. It's Cold War history wrapped in silence. USS Thresher Disaster the USS Thresher, one of the most advanced nuclear-powered submarines of its time, met a tragic fate on April 10, 1963 while conducting deep diving tests off the coast of Cape Cod. It disappeared into the depths, taking all 129 souls aboard, Navy personnel and shipyard workers with it. This marked the first loss of a nuclear submarine in the US Navy's history, a devastating event that shook the entire military community. In the hours leading up to the disaster, the Thresher's final messages, garbled and filled with distress, described minor difficulties in an attempt to blow, a term used for releasing ballast to surface. These chilling words hinted at a dire situation unfolding thousands of feet below the surface. Despite extensive search efforts, which included the use of cutting-edge sonar and submersibles like the Trieste 2 the wreckage wasn't found until weeks later, some 8,400 feet beneath the ocean. The official inquiry into the sinking suggested that a failure in the submarine's saltwater piping system, likely a weak joint, could have caused a high-pressure water leak, shorting out the nuclear reactor and leaving Thresher powerless. Without propulsion and possibly unable to surface due to frozen moisture in the ballast tanks, the submarine's fate was sealed. However, later analysis of classified acoustic data offered another theory, an electrical failure in the reactor's coolant system, which led to the reactor's shutdown and ultimately the submarine's implosion at 2,400 feet. This tragedy sparked a complete overhaul of submarine safety. It led to the creation of SubSafe Program, a rigorous set of design and safety checks that has since prevented similar disasters. The Thresher, now a symbol of those lost, remains on eternal patrol, a silent reminder of the dangers of the deep and the importance of safeguarding lives at sea. USS Scorpion Loss The tale of the USS Scorpion, nicknamed USS Scrapion, is a chilling enigma of the Cold War's underwater tensions. This skipjack-class nuclear submarine, a vessel designed for speed and stealth, vanished in May 1968 while returning home from a deployment in the Mediterranean. Unlike her sister ship, the Thresher, the exact cause of the Scorpion's sinking, taking with her all 99 crew members, remains an official unknown, fueling decades of speculation and theories. Adding to the mystery, Scorpion's disappearance was one of four submarine losses in that single year of 1968. 
a grim tally that included submarines from Israel, France, and the Soviet Union. Located on the Atlantic seabed, some 400 nautical miles southwest of Azores at a crushing depth of 9,800 feet, the wreckage of the Scorpion and her nuclear reactor continue to be subjects of intense interest. Navy investigations, including a court of inquiry, could not definitively pinpoint the cause, ruling out sabotage but offering no conclusive explanation. One intriguing theory that emerged suggested the accidental activation of one of her own Mark 37 torpedoes. This acoustic homing torpedo, lacking a propeller guard, might have started running in its tube, armed itself, and then locked onto the nearest target, the Scorpion herself. Another theory positioned a hydrogen explosion during battery charging, consistent with two small explosions detected by underwater hydrophones at the time of her loss. Later examinations of the wreckage revealed a detached propeller shaft, leading to some experienced submariners to speculate that flooding caused by this damage could have been the culprit. The photographs taken by deep sea submersibles, including those secretly facilitated by the Navy with the Woods Holes Alvin in exchange for locating the Titanic, offer glimpses of a hull ravaged by implosion forces. Despite numerous theories and investigations, the silence of the deep surrounding the USS Scorpion persists, a somber reminder of the hidden battles and enduring secrets of the Cold War. K219 Incident In the frigid waters of the North Atlantic in October 1968, the Soviet submarine K-219 was on a routine Cold War patrol, cruising nearly 680 miles northeast of Bermuda, when things went catastrophically wrong. A missile tube seal failed, letting seawater mix with the highly volatile rocket fuel inside of one of its nuclear missiles. That triggered a lethal chemical reaction. Within minutes, the sub-Silo-6 exploded, killing two sailors instantly and starting a chain of horror that would grip the crew of 120. The submarine plunged from a depth of 130 feet to nearly 1,000 feet before the crew could stabilize it. Toxic gases swept through the missile compartment, and a young seaman named Sergei Premenin did something most 20-year-olds couldn't even fathom. He entered the burning, gas-choked reactor room. Wearing only a basic gas mask, he manually shut down the overheating nuclear reactor. But when he tried to escape, the pressure had sealed the door. He died locked inside, but his actions likely prevented a nuclear catastrophe. Posthumously, he was declared a hero of the Russian Federation. Captain Igor Pratanov surfaced the damaged submarine using battery power. Moscow wanted the sub towed 4,300 miles home, but poison gas leaks and increasing damage forced Pratanov to defy orders. He evacuated the crew and stayed aboard alone until it was clear the vessel was lost. K-219 sank on October 6, taking its full load of nuclear missiles with it, now resting 18,000 feet below the surface. Britanov was charged with treason, sabotage, and negligence, though he was never imprisoned. Years later, the HBO BBC film Hostile Waters dramatized the disaster. Britanov sued Warner Bros. for defamation and won a settlement under $100,000. The US Navy continues to deny any involvement, despite Soviet claims of a collision with the USS Augusta. Komsomolets Disaster The story of the Soviet nuclear-powered submarine Komsomolets is a chilling account of disaster at sea a stark illustration of the potential perils lurking within the deep. On April 7, 1989, while tracking U.S. submarines in the frigid waters off Norway, a fire erupted in the Kamsa Mullitz's seventh compartment. Despite the crew's valiant efforts, the blaze raged out of control, spreading to the sixth compartment and tragically claiming an officer's life. A subsequent power surge ignited even more fires throughout the vessel. Surfacing and sending an SOS, the comms of mullets waited for rescue that was agonizingly delayed. Soviet ships were dispatched from a base near Murmansk. As the submarine battled the inferno, toxic carbon monoxide filled the air, incapacitating crew members. The fire proved relentless, breaching hull seals and allowing icy seawater to flood the affected compartments. The order to evacuate became a desperate scramble. A single life raft, designed for 25, was overwhelmed by 50 desperate crewmen as the comms of mullets began its final stern first descent to a crushing depth of 5,600 feet. In a harrowing attempt to escape, several officers, including the commander, sought refuge in the submarine's unique emergency capsule. Yet, this device failed to detach until the comms of mullets reached the seabed, where immense pressure built to a staggering 2,200 pounds per square inch. When it finally surfaced, tragedy struck again. Two men were ejected into the unforgiving ocean, and those remaining inside perished from toxic smoke. Ultimately, of the 69 crew members, only 27 survived the ordeal, most succumbing to drowning or the brutal cold of the 36-degree water while awaiting rescue. The comms of mullets with its nuclear reactor and two nuclear-tipped torpedoes now rest silently on the ocean floor, a haunting reminder of a disaster where 42 lives were lost. Chinese Submarine 361 it was April 2003, 
and China's Great Wall No. 61, known as Submarine 361, was out on a stealth training mission in the Yellow Sea. What should have been a standard silent drill turned into one of the deadliest peacetime disasters in Chinese military history. 70 men were on board, including 13 naval cadets, never made it home. And what killed them wasn't an enemy attack, it was oxygen, or the sudden lack of it. The Ming-class sub, a modernized cousin of the old Soviet Romeo-class design, needed to recharge its batteries using diesel engines. But to do that, it had to bring in fresh air, either by surfacing or using a snorkel. Problem was, the snorkel's air valve failed. Still, someone activated the diesel engine. Within two minutes, all the oxygen was gone. The crew suffocated at their post before they even realized what was happening. The pressure inside dropped so fast, it made the escape hatches nearly impossible to open. Here's where it gets even darker. This was a no-contact exercise. So the sub drifted for 10 days with a periscope poking above the waters like a ghost. Fishermen were the first to notice. When recovery crews finally boarded, the sailors were still seated at their stations, lifeless. The aftermath was a political earthquake. Commander Shi Yongshen and four other top naval officers were dismissed. Some had been in line for high-ranking positions. That was over. The entire disaster exposed terrifying flaws in training and procedure, mistakes that cost 70 lives. The submarine was towed to Yulin Harbor, then back to Dalian like a floating coffin. The Chinese government paid out compensation to the families, though the exact numbers were never made public. In military terms, this was a $10 million mistake that tore through the heart of China's naval future.